Today, we would like to present our talk about the LVM profile guided instrumentation. We'll start from overview and then we'll present example of call site aware profiling. Um, my name is Sergey Kushkin and I will start the first part. The first slides will introduce the target of this presentation. Uh, why are we talking about profile guided optimizations? Then we'll uh, take a look at PGR, how it's implemented in LLVM, why it's implemented, uh, what are benefits. And we'll also dive into implementation details, our data structures, optimization passes, and our additional tools that are used to process data. In the second part, we'll cover how to extend existing profile get optimizations, adding your new data, and we'll use uh, call site aware profiling as example. We'll describe how to extend passes and instrumentation. We'll talk about extension of LVM prop data tools. And uh, we'll conclude with overview how to load new data, new profiling data, and pass to optimizations. The purpose of this presentation is to show how it's easy to extend profile get optimizations. And we'll start from a uh, general description of profile guided optimization, how it's implemented in PGO, uh, what is profile guided optimizations, and when it's useful, and what are drawbacks of this approach. We'll also show some case study. Uh, and then we will talk more about implementation in LVM, how it works, uh, how optimization passes work, how instrumentation uh, and profile data collection may work. And uh, the most important part uh, will show, based on example of uh, call site aware profiling, will show how to add your new information uh, for instrumentation collected at runtime and used for optimizations. So let's first uh, recap what is PGO. Uh, it's uh, profile-guided optimization, but it's not actually one optimization, it's rather approach when existing optimizations are extended and use information about program uh, behavior that we need to collect additionally. And that information helps to make better decisions during optimizations. And uh, of course, that additional information helps us to improve uh, decision-making and we can uh, improve some important scenario. But there is also a potential drawback that profiling information does not cover all important scenario. And then some of those scenario may degrade. Uh, so it's very important to make sure that scenario or set of scenario that is used to collect profiling data is representative and correctly describes, fully describes uh, important program usage scenario. Um, as we talk about collection of profile information, there are actually two possible ways uh, how profiling information can be collected. Our first approach is sampling, and uh, another approach is instrumentation. I will talk more about them. There are certain benefits and drawbacks for both approaches and what are supported in LVM. Uh, let's start from PGO introduction, sampling pipeline. Uh, we first need to collect information about program execution as we discussed. And for that, well, we have some source code of the program, we need to compile it. And then we run program under some sampling profiler. For example, in this case, we run under perf. Uh, we use record to collect information. Uh, uh, using sampling approach. And then we process result of profiling uh, using create LLVM prof tool, uh, which is additional tool uh, that takes result of perf and transforms it into format that uh, Clank will recognize. So in order to map information from program execution to source code, we need to also enable our debug information. And in this case, we enable uh, line tables only, which is enough to map uh, from program counters to lines in the code. 
And uh, as you see, uh, this information will be used later uh, to attach information about program execution, the source code and to IR, intermediate representation of the program, and uh, to improve decisions during optimization. And of course, there is a potential drawback that this information is not precise, especially we use advanced optimizations, and uh, such as in this case, O2 or maybe O3 optimization levels that move forward aggressively. And uh, there potentially sampling profiling uh, will not allow us to collect very precise information. And uh, in order to store information about program execution, sampling uh, profiling uses several formats. Uh, so one of those formats is a simple text format where we collect information uh, for every function uh, and we store information about certain uh, program counters and places in that function that were executed. Another approach that is supported by LLVM is to use binary encoding format. And that's, of course, more compact format. Uh, and that format is the uh, main format produced by how to FDO or create LLVM prof tool. And uh, there is another potential supported way uh, with uh, GCC compatible encoding, where uh, GCOF uh, format is used. And uh, another tool, create GCOF, or is uh, supported as part of after FDO uh, to produce uh, such output format. Well, as we discussed, uh, sampling profiling has potential drawback of inaccurate debug information. Uh, and in order to improve accuracy, we can use instrumentation. So instrumentation uh, approach requires us to compile program with uh, certain additional transformations. And uh, we use F profile instant generate flag to enable those transformations. Then compare during first phase adds a code to the program that will record different traces in the program while program is executed. And uh, we can also specify output files and some details uh, that are used uh, to store this profiling information. And basically when program exits, that profiling file prof row will be created. Uh, such row files can be processed by LLVM prof data tool. We can merge uh, set some additional weights between different execution scenario. And uh, this tool allows us to produce of data format, which is uh, supported by later LLVM optimizations. So then uh, that file can be passed using F profile insert use command line flag. And uh, LLVM will load data from that file and pass to certain optimizations. There are several ways in instrumentation uh, where we can instrument program. We can instrument program uh, during early stage at front end, and for that we can use F profile instant generate flag. Uh, we can use uh, middle end intermediate representations to instrument, and for that there is a flag F profile generate, or we can also do uh, middle end context sensitive. Uh, and uh, use flag FSCS profile generate. So the main difference between those flags is where we do instrumentation. And certain optimizations are, will use information uh, to make decisions during transformations of the code. Uh, and it's more beneficial to collect uh, runtime information from the point which is close to optimization. So for example, in front end, when we are, are collecting information for code coverage, uh, it's easier to map result of profiling to the source code level. So a front end way is better for code coverage. Middle end, F profile generate. This option is used uh, 
to instrument code before inlining, and then information collected at this point will help to make better decisions at the inlining phase, but later code will be optimized uh, and can be significantly changed during inlining, which will actually uh, complicate usage of profiling information and its maintenance uh, at the later stages. So we won't have as precise information uh, for machine uh, IR optimizations as for inlining. And then uh, that's why we also have another way, context sensitive instrumentation that will allow us to instrument at later phase after inlining and get more precise information uh, for other lower uh, level IR optimizations. Uh, context sensitive instrumentation requires additional information. We start from the same instrumentation as was shown in the previous uh, slide for regular instrumentation. And then we use additional flex, uh, FCS profile generate, and we use F profile use flag to instrument only those points that are actually important in the code and collect more precise information for later stages of uh, LLVM optimizations and code duration. Then we run program, collect the data, and finally we use this information with F profile use flag. So the next section uh, will show implementation of profile guided optimizations. And uh, we talk more about instrumentation, how we insert counters, uh, how we uh, count basic blocks and how we also uh, trace values of their uh, variables where needed. We'll look in the implementation details such as intrinsics and how they are lowered. And of course, we'll look into compiler runtime, that's the other part that's used for profile guided optimizations. Where value profiling, uh, values are collected, uh, where files are created and different counters are traced. Uh, then we'll show examples and talk about different formats, how profiling data is stored in memory or on the disk. Uh, as we discussed, we start from profiling instrumentation. And in LLVM, there are two parts. We first insert intrinsics, um, and then we lower them. This allows us to work on high level during optimizations and eases maintenance of information uh, during instrumentation. And at later phases, we transform those intrinsics into specific machine instructions um, where it's uh, required in a better way for each platform. Um, and the other phase is runtime and uh, processing where we need to store information into raw prof data, uh, and we need to convert and merge profiling data. And then the final phase that we are shown, that's where we use information about program, and that's a final optimization phase. We run compiler again, we load profiling data, and at this point we have additional information that allows us to make better decisions. However, we need to pass this information to optimizations and we need to store that in some internal structures. And we need to maintain those internal structures during uh, optimizations between the final profile guided optimization and our point where we load this profiling data information. We'll talk more about intrinsics and its lowering. So as we discuss, intrinsics are used for instrumentation and intrinsics in general is a built-in function which is uh, inserted by a compiler. Uh, they can be used to optimize different operations such as floating point operations or memory calls. Uh, instead of extension of IR, we are adding uh, another layer of abstraction. We are adding new operations and some compiler optimizations will recognize them and process in a special way. So uh, in case of instrumentation, we also introduce 
uh, intrinsics, and we describe them uh, in intrinsics td file. Uh, for example, we introduce functions that count uh, different events, such as execution of basic block. And then uh, when compiler sees this intrinsic different compiler optimization, uh, we'll uh, recognize it. And even if optimization is not processing it in a special way, it will still maintain uh, this intrinsic and process correctly. This will simplify extension. Instead of adding new IR node in case of instrumentation, we just add the intrinsics and simplify maintenance. Uh, now we need to decide where to insert those counters during instrumentation. And uh, one of the first things we'd like to count in profile guide optimization is execution of different basic blocks in the function. Let's take a look at example of control flow graph, entry block, several if uh, then else blocks, and exit. We may add counters everywhere but that will have a higher overhead and there is a better way. Uh, so LLVM follows MST approach where we take MST and uh, we also use uh, information if it's available about frequencies of different edges or their estimates. And uh, then we don't need to insert collection of information everywhere. We just need to instrument those places uh, that are not in MST, such as in this case, the total number of entries into a function, and if then, and if then two blocks that correspond to edges not in MST. So that significantly reduces overheads for counting basic events. But there is also another way of profiling where we want to record more precise information about value of variable. For example, we may want to count uh, basic blocks and then we have a function call. Uh, if that's a virtual function or indirect call, we won't know exactly which function is called and we may want to uh, profile those values. In this case, LVM supports value props. Uh, another example is where we uh, may want to profile operations and their parameters, such as length of memory copy or memory move or memory set memory intrinsic operation. Uh, those are quite common operations and they can be specialized for smaller sizes to work in much better way, more efficient way. So LLVM actually also allows profiling of lens for these functions. And the value prop is a common concept that can be also used for lens of uh, different uh, loop counters or, for example, parameters of the function. Since uh, we need to profile values at runtime, we also need to make some decisions and uh, define some trade-offs. It's expensive to profile and store all possible values during execution. So uh, one of uh, good trade-off decisions is to use interval. And uh, we specify start and last uh, position in that interval, precise range start and precise range last position. Uh, we also count values that are smaller or slightly larger than this last value. And we specify a large value uh, for very large values that uh, we cannot profile. So by counting those three intervals, we have uh, inside yellow interval, we count precise values. For green, we have one counter and for blue part, we have one counter. And those counters are, tell us more information, whether there are very large values and whether there are values slightly larger than our interval, and we just need to extend this interval. This allows us to 
configure profiling of values to get more precise information for a specific program. Now let's take a look at compiler building functions that are used to implement uh, different behavior in compiler runtime. So some of the functions are related to file formats such as get magic or get version. And there are other functions uh, that are used for value profiling, instrument, memory, op, and target. And uh, of course, we need to work with files and uh, write data back to the disk. Uh, for that, we have intrinsic profile, write file. We have dump and reset counter for initialization and some other intrinsics. You can look at their detail of implementation and list in compiler runtime leap profile. Let's look at an example where we have two functions, and this function is called in memory set intrinsic. So uh, initially in the source code, as you see, we are just calling memset function, but LVM will recognize this function, standard library function, and will replace it with LLVM memset intrinsic, and it will also add more information um, for address space and data type uh, that is encoded in P0, I8, and I64. Now, on IR level, we'll have some transformations to pass address. Uh, so we'll have get element pointer and uh, load counter value, and we'll have also addition and increment. Those green lines correspond to uh, counting uh, of number of entries into function or into basic block, which is unique in this function. And then for value profiling, we'll have a call to runtime, uh, specifically instrument memory operation in this case, uh, where we also pass pointer information and uh, number of iterations. So in this case, we want to profile memset parameter num. So we pass this parameter percent one uh, to the intrinsics and it stores information during execution. So that's how our instrumentation works for different cases. Now let's take a look uh, at the format that profiling runtime uses to store information on the disk. First, there is a header of this uh, file. Then we store per function profiling data, and those per function profiling data will have our references to counters, uh, different names, and value counters. And of course, uh, there are some parameters like number of counters and uh, to find in the overall information part that corresponds. Hello, my name is Pavel Kosov, and I will continue this presentation. At this point, he already knows a lot about PGO internal structures. So we can uh, go deeper in the PGO implementation and discuss how to add our own extension to it. Uh, in this section, we firstly have a view proposed extension. Uh, we will discuss uh, trade-offs uh, that this extension has. Uh, then we will describe steps which we should perform to achieve our goal. And uh, in general, you will see that it is not so difficult to handle this. And in some cases, it even very easy. Uh, so let's proceed. Mm. Uh, our PGO extension is named by a scala site aware PGO, mm, but actually uh, this kind of PGO or very similar one was already uh, described by Microsoft team several years ago. Uh, and it is already implemented in Microsoft compiler. Uh, description with the link to a video will be in our 
presentation and the slide with the references. So in short, original PGO use only one set of function set of counters for every function, but we can use uh, inside one function different set of counters for different colors of this function. And therefore, we will get more precise information during optimization stage. On the other hand, such approach brings a lot of uh, overhead for instrumented binary, overhead in terms of code size, compile time, runtime memory usage, and performance. Mm, let's compare our two approaches, original one and call site aware PGO in a scheme. Uh, please take a look on the left example. Here we can see that one function foo has exactly one set of counters. And every color which uh, invoke foo, which call foo, mm -hmm. will increment the same set of counters. I mean that a foo, regardless of its color, will increment the same set of counters. And therefore, on optimization stage, we will we, we cannot distinguish between different colors um, because we have only average picture of using this function. On the other hand, on right side, call site aware PGO yeah. add following step to the function foo. When function foo started to execute, it choose appropriate set of counters based on call site ID and pass it to this function from the caller side. Um, so we do not distinguish between different callers here. We distinguish even between different call sites uh, to get even more precise information optimization stage. Uh, so now you understand overall picture of our proposed extension and the uh, following step uh, we will discuss what stages of instrumentation we should change and after that we will implement them. I will recall a uh, pipeline of in instrumentation, uh, which you already saw. Uh, I will recall it because I will lately um, describe what, what phases will be changed. So first of all, instrumentation stage, where we insert and lower intrinsics. After that, uh, in binary, we will write profile data and convert it uh, to necessary format. And on optimization stage, we should load this prop data, store it in internal structures of Clang and use it in our optimizations. So to support call site aware PGO, we should change these uh, steps. So we need to add our own intrinsic, insert it in code in the right place. After that, we should lower it. And uh, as we don't need to change probe data format, we don't need to, uh, to change write and merge probe data functions. And also uh, we should not change a loading probe data. But we need to mm, adapt internal structures to store our auxiliary information. And we should change optimization to actually use it. So let's look at the code, how to implement intrinsic insertion. First of all, uh, we should um, define it. 
And I recall that we will uh, insert our intrinsic before every call site. And this intrinsic will provide pointer to necessary counters to call a function. And to add such intrinsic, we should go to the intrinsic.td file. TD, it means table gen description. Um, it will be a very easy and uh, intrinsic. It will take two parameters, callie hash and call site ID. But just adding such intrinsic uh, to table gen file is not enough. We also, we also should change some part of C++, C++ code. And this is intrinsic inst.h file, where we should add the class insert prof call site counters. This class uh, will be needed for us because it add an access to appearance of intrinsic to the call hash and call site ID. And as you see, it is all, it, it also a very simple class, nothing special. So at this point, we have all necessary data defined so we can uh, change some code and insert this intrinsic. To insert this intrinsic, we will go to the PGO instrumentation.cpp file. And first of all, we should get call site ID for the current uh, call a hash and call install. Call install here is a pointer to call site instruction. Uh, I will take a step back here and uh, describe uh, where we can get this instruction. So in PGO instrumentation, we should iterate our function, our instrumented function. And for every call site instruction, uh, we should perform such kind of code. So here, if we have call site ID uh, greater than zero, it means that this call site ID is uh, registered for this calling. We just uh, insert a call to the mm, already defined intrinsic. Uh, details about get call site ID and code around it you can find in our patch. The link to our patch will be in the slide with the references. So let's uh, take a look how, how this intrinsic looks at code. You see here a very um, simple function bar, which actually do nothing except calling function foo. And this IR is done after Peugeot instrumentation gen pass. And here you see um, three intrinsics. Intrinsics marked with uh, green color uh, was inserted by original Peugeot. It, it just uh, in, inserted here to show that uh, we need to increment counter. And then three six market with blue color inserted by our extension. We inserted two uh, in three six because uh, first of all, we should insert call site ID. In, in this case, it is three. And after calling function full, we should clear uh, call site ID for this function. And as you see, after calling function full, we insert intrinsics, which will pass uh, zero as call site ID. After we have mm, such intrinsic, we should lower them in code. And to do this, we will go to the insert profiling.cpp, the lower intrinsic 
uh, function. In this function, we can add our handle for the insert prof call site counters class, which we already defined it. And we will create simple function lower CS counters, which will and get uh, insert prof call site counters in principle as a parameter. Uh, actually, this uh, this function lower CS counters is not uh, complicated. It just records call site ID to a memory location. Uh, which uh, every function has, it, it is actually global variable uh, associated with every function. Details about lower CS counters implementation you can also find in our patch. And after this lowering, code is uh, looking like that. Uh, it is our IR dump after front end instrumentation based coverage lowering. So, as in previous slide, code market in green was inserted by original PGO and code market with uh, blue was inserted with our. Uh, as you see, our code is pretty simple. It just store uh, call site ID to the global variable. Um, yeah, so before, again, before function foo, uh, we store calls, current call site ID in, in this case, it is, it is a three. And after current call site, uh, after current function foo, we store uh, zero there, just to clear. So function bar instrumented is very simple, but what about function foo? Um, in function foo, there is some, but um, a little bit complicated. Um, here again, uh, code market in green sorted by original PGO. And we will look uh, to at the code uh, market with blue color. First of all, mm, number uh, marked with the red. It is a total number of uh, instrumented basic blocks in this function. But uh, number marked in round, in this case, five. It is a total number of instrumented blocks in this function multiplied on total number of call site. So um, this number represent uh, the whole set of counters which, uh, which this function has. Uh, following number market with the uh, red, it is a index of counter which we should increment for this call site. So first of all, we should uh, determine first index for this call site. And we just multiply call site ID to the uh, number of instrumented basic blocks in this function. And after that, we should determine a number of counter, a number of exact counter for this call site ID, which we should implement. And we just add uh, counters index to the previously uh, calculated value. And we just pass uh, percent one variable to the get element pointer function. And after that, uh, actually percent two contains mm, pointer to necessary counter. We can implement it 
and work with it. Uh, so already we have a pretty good instrumented code. It can be run well and it will produce necessary probe data. So uh, let's go to the next step. To convert prof data generated by our instrumented binary to prof data which which can be loaded to the compiler, we should use LLVM prof data tool. LLVM prof data is an incredibly useful tool for our needs. It can uh, merge different prof data together into one file. And also, it can change uh, format uh, of prof data to the appropriate to the clank. LLVM prof data has several possibilities. Uh, first of all, LLVM prof data show. It will um, show to us some statistic from the prof data. We will we can uh, get information about um, uh, number of instrumented functions, maximum number of uh, counters in these functions, and etc. Actually, there are a lot of different interesting things. Uh, uh, second possibility, merge. Uh, it is actually the main I can see. Uh, I can say uh, this is the main uh, possibility of LLVM prof data because uh, only this um, this possibility convert prof data to the necessary form and LLVM prof data overlap, which shows similarities between different prof data. LVM prof data uh, get overlap uh, recently, but still it is very useful for some scenarios. And if you change format of prop data, then you definitely should change LVM prop data to do it. You should change merge insert profile function which perform merge different instant profiles and uh, you should change a bunch of code in instant prof reader and instant prof writer cpp uh, this code depends uh, this these changes depends on what changes did you bring to the prop data format So after probe data merge, we have uh, probe data with the necessary format, and we can load it to Clang. To load it to our compiler, uh, we should use fprofile use flag, and also if we change format of probe data. We should go to instantprof.cpp and change following methods. A red next record, red header, etc. Uh, changes will be not complicated, but it should be done carefully. Uh, luckily, we have good uh, test coverage here, so you will uh, notice. If we, if you break something, and also I, I would recommend to uh, to save backward compatibility when you add your own changes to prop data format, because if you do not uh, have backward compatibility, you should to regenerate a lot of probe data in LLVM tests. And it can be it can be a little bit pain. 
So after we load our probe data to Planck, we should store it. Um, and to do so, we we should go to the PGO instrumentation.cpp. We should take a closer look at Funk PGO instrumentation plus, uh, which will perform an MST building. So uh, minimal spanning tree should be exactly the same as for instrumented binary. And uh, after we have uh, the same in MST, we can easily map uh, counters uh, from prop data to existing basic blocks. And after we have such mapping, we can assign branch probabilities to basic block edges. And we extend uh, branch probabilities with our call site aware auxiliary information. Details also you can find in our page. So and at this point, we already done with our extension. Compiler has uh, all necessary information uh, which is presented in its internal structure and it can be used uh, it can be uh, used by its optimization and you can either uh, extend uh, existing optimizations or maybe add your own why not so let me summarize what we learned today from this presentation Actually, first of all, I I have to recall that PGO is a very important optimization approach. And LLVM support a lot of optimizations, uh, a lot of important, important optimization, uh, which use PGO. But still, it has a lot of opportunities uh, to make better. <laughs> um, and uh, at this point, you already know a lot about PGO and you have a good starting point to dig into it further, to implement your own extension, which, which is um, more appropriate, more suitable for your needs. And also you can go to the PGO related code and had some enhances there and please uh, we encourage everyone uh, to start or continue work on PGO uh, enhancement because it, it is a really important part of compiler uh, so thank you uh, this conclude our presentation and hope it was interesting and please do not hesitate to ask questions uh, we will do our best to answer them